Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, today. My name is Amir Ismail and I'm the uh, CEO of Amir Ismail and Associates. It is a Toronto-based licensed citizenship and immigration firm. I've been associated with immigration industry for the last 30 years and we arrange these uh, information sessions and question and answer sessions on regular basis on every Friday at 11 a.m. EST, that's Eastern Standard Time. So a very nice uh, warm morning here in Toronto. And uh, I can see that uh, we have a lot of people joining us today. We'll be taking your questions uh, as soon as possible and uh, we'll answer each one of them. I will I'll at least try to answer each one of them. For those of us, uh, uh, those of you who are joining us um, uh, for the first time, a very warm welcome and those who are regular thank you very much for your continued support uh, so let's uh, acknowledge each one of you um, to answer the questions it's very simple if you're joining us from Facebook LinkedIn or YouTube all you need to do is to leave your questions in comments and we will be attending to them um, just uh, let me know where are you joining us from today, which part of the world, so we can see uh, where our, our broadcast is reaching today. Um, with the comments, it reminded me that I should share with you that we have the same giveaway uh, available today as well. So if you uh, watch our uh, session until the end, at the end, we will be having a draw. Uh, that would that could give you uh, a one-on-one -on -one consultation and that is not going to cost you anything right all you need to do is to put hashtag AIA in comments and we will uh, include you in the draw so without further ado let me acknowledge uh, people who have joined us very kindly okay and let's see we have Jamshade Hanzai joining us. I don't know if you have joined us for the first time, but uh, thank you very much. Shahid is a regular. Uh, thank you. Uh, Asbahi, I think you're joining us for the first time. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Fahad is, has joined us. Uh, Sayyid Fahad Hussain. And thank you for your appreciation, uh, uh, Fahad. Kamal has uh, joined us from UAE. Thank you, Kamal. Well, you don't have to tell me where you're joining me from. I know that. Ijaz has joined us. Thank you. Majalal. Rehan Shams has joined us from UAE again, Dubai. Rehan, thank you very much. Um, I can see a lot of people, uh, known faces, people whom I have served in the last 30 years, they are all joining in, and I appreciate. Aksar has joined us, and she's asking for uh, guidelines. And um, okay, so Fahad, I'm going to take this question shortly. I'm just quickly uh, browse through people who have joined us, and Emma Jalal has been very proactive. He has already entered into the pool. I'm just going to share with you the uh, screen. Uh, where we would be actually collecting our um, uh, giveaway. Let me just quickly share with you. So this is uh, how the screen looks like. We have 12 entries uh, so far. So hopefully uh, we'll have more and then we'll be able to uh, conduct our draws once again. Um, just let me just quickly show you guys all you need to do is to enter hashtag AIA and you will be entered in the draw okay so okay so let's uh, very quickly see who else is with us we have Hawais, Bashir, Walid and Deepak has joined us from India thank you very much for joining us today Deepak, Kas from Dubai, and uh, Tassin has joined us today. Tassin Salim, thank you. Amir Mushtaq. Okay, 
So I think I'll just quickly wrap it up because it uh, might not be possible for me to acknowledge everyone. I'm sorry about that, guys. We have a very limited time today. Um, I need to wrap it up very, very quickly. So I'll just dive into your questions, Gulam, Okar, Heather. Dr. Faria uh, Jalal is joining us uh, from today. Dr. Faria, we have one Faria on our uh, staff as well. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Jim Shade, Amir Mushtaq, Zia Sahotra from Malta, if I, I'm not mistaken. I think my memory is still with me, although I'm getting old. Uh, I can remember people uh, where they are. They are join. Uh, they join us uh, from uh, regularly. Janaka is joining us from Sri Lanka. Very well, warm welcome. I think this is your first time you joining us. Sylvia has joined us as well. Okay, so so many people. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, so let's uh, start with. Uh, uh, question number one, and uh, as uh, I go along, I'm going to keep on uh, acknowledging all you guys uh, who have uh, joined us. Okay, so let's uh, take question number one. Who would be, who would that person be? Okay, so we have a question coming in from Sayyid Fahad Hussain. He recently got married. He's doing a job as GM sales in Pakistan, uh, a top insurance uh, company. And he has 14 years of experience. He has six months baby girl and a wife, and he wants to migrate with them from uh, Karachi, Pakistan. Uh, so he needs guideline. So far, the, as I have always indicated, uh, it might not be possible for us to make an assessment as such uh, right away. But I can give you an idea that um the skill worker assessment basically base is based on uh, your age your educational qualification your work experience and your language skills and that of your spouse if you have additional points like additional um uh, factors that we need to take into account such as um presence of a relative in canada or uh, uh, a job offer in canada or a provincial nomination from a province in Canada, these points are additional. So we would re require further details from you in the form of a CV or in the form of um, you complete our assessment form uh, available on our website, www.amirismile.com. We make a, an, a, an assessment and get back to you within two business days, and we can let you know what are your chances, okay? So let's uh, do this uh, step, and then we'll arrange a one-on-one -on -one consultation as well. Let's see. We have Zulfikar joining us. And uh, same uh, similar question is coming from uh, Ijaz ul as well. Let me read that. He has electrical experience. He wants to apply as electrical technician work permit in Canada without IELTS. Is it possible? OK, so we don't deal in work permits. Um, Ajaz, you might want to deal with a licensed recruiter in Canada. And I repeat again and again that you are not supposed to pay any money to anyone who is offering a job. It is illegal in Canada to offer jobs and charge people money. Uh, recruit, licensed recruiters are uh, supposed to charge only Canadian employers toward arrangement or referral of a qualified candidate. You as a job seeker are not supposed to pay any money. So better speak to a licensed recruiter by contacting licensed recruiter based in Canada and don't pay any money to them, OK? Aman Jalal, thank you for entering in our giveaway, which is AIA. And if you are uh, lucky, you will be offered a free consultation. OK, so let's uh, see. We have Awais joining us. Masood Bashir, yeah, welcome. Bali. OK, so Liberty Pass is saying, do we deal in Portugal? Uh, yes, we do deal in Portugal um, investment programs and various other programs. In fact, our company uh, deals in citizenship by investment programs, such as Turkey. We also deal in citizenship by residence programs like Portugal and many other uh, European countries, such as Greece, uh, Malta, for example, uh, Cyprus. And we also deal in 
uh, other citizenship by investment program um, in in Caribbean, for example, we have uh, Antigua and Barbuda, uh, where you invest uh, somewhere around hundred thousand dollars and you get uh, a passport. Well, some some people are interested in getting those uh, passports from Caribbean countries because it helps them in uh, traveling, uh, visa free travel. Uh, especially for Europe. So those passports are very, very useful. So we do a lot of cases for Antigua, St. Lucia, Dominica. Um, so all these countries we are uh, dealing with. So yeah, get in touch with our team. It could be perfect. Uh, Wakas is joining us from Dubai. Okay, so let's uh, move on to another questions. Okay. So Adil is asking uh, 72 hours validity of PCR test is, is till a departure from Pakistan or till arrival in Canada. So yeah, so you need to take the test 72 hours prior to at least uh, 72 hours prior to uh, your departure. It has to be like, you know, if you're spending a lot of time during the transit, then of course you need to take care of that uh, uh, point. Okay. Jamshed is saying he has joined us for the third time. Thank you very much. Uh, perfect. Let's see. We have more questions coming in. Let me just quickly go through them. Okay. So we have Fahad. Uh, just answer his question, I guess. Um, I'm a cousin of Mr. Shaham, who migrated through you with his family and wife and two lovely daughters. Fahad, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate and uh, most of my clients come through referrals from other clients that we have served in the last 30 years. And uh, I remember, of course, Shaham and um, his lovely family. Uh, we assisted them uh, somewhere around, I think, six years ago, but I knew Shaham for um, uh, I think for the last uh, 10, 12 years now. And he is a very big source of referrals to us. So thank you very much, Shaham. So you can say thank you to him on my behalf. Uh, he is, I think he is in Milton now uh, with his family. Uh, haven't been able to speak to him for a very long time, but thank you, Fahad. I'll be happy to assist you as well. Okay, rest assured. Omar has uh, entered our, in our draw. Okay, so there is a question coming in from someone in LinkedIn. I can't see your name, I'm sorry, but uh, he says uh, he has applied for visit visa in November 2020 uh, because he had some, uh, he had an invitation from Canada for uh, an expo, which uh, will happen in this month. I think you're saying this month of July, but he hasn't got any response yet. Um, and he's asking my opinion. So basically, the borders are closed for uh, visitors, business visitors, or tourism. Uh, you cannot expect to receive a decision until such time that Canadian government reopens the borders for people who wish to come here on business or uh, tourism. Uh, you can fall under one of the exemptions. For example, you have a close re relative residing in Canada as a permanent resident or citizen. So that may exempt you from uh, coming to Canada, from the restrictions uh, on coming to Canada. Uh, so uh, if these uh, exemptions are not applicable on you, naturally you will not get your visa until uh, the borders are finally open, and I don't expect that they're going to start accepting people until September because we recently learned that the Canadian government is considering U.S. citizens to enter Canada if they are fully vaccinated, and that might happen, happen in September. Um, and that is also not for sure. So let's see. Uh, I think uh, by October or somewhere around November, they'll start uh, allowing people from outside. Dr. Sarvan has joined us from Dubai. Thank you very much. And he's logged in from YouTube. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So uh, just to remind you, this uh, hashtag, you don't have to re enter it. If you've entered it once, uh, that is okay. That is sufficient. Uh, you will be entered, rest assured. 
Okay, so we already have a few people who have 44 entries so far. Wow, today is a uh, competitive day. We have a lot of people. Okay, so let's, uh, yeah, we acknowledge that. Uh, Fahad, thank you. Asan is join, joining us for the second time. Thank you very much. And I hope you would join us in future as well. Lots of people are putting in hashtag AIA. OK, so there is another question coming in from Harris. Uh, he says he's from Karachi. He has been working with Canadian client from Pakistan for many years. And if he wants to offer me a job in Canada with my PR, does he need LMIA to offer me a job? Is there any way for him to avoid LMIA? Yes, Harris. So we can look into it based on his um, location. He might uh, be able to offer you the job without the need of LMIA under one of the provincial programs. Uh, there could be a, a an option for the uh, uh, prospective uh, uh, job seeker under the uh, international mobility programs. So we can evaluate that. Uh, in fact, your employer can get in touch with us. Um, this will only happen, of course, once they book a consultation, or you can do that on their behalf. You can speak to one of our consultants, or you can actually uh, book a consultation with me about this matter. Um, there could be other options available to avoid, avoid LMIA. And you can do your own research as well. You might be able to find the solution, but there is, um, there are options, okay? Sulfakar, thank you for putting this AIA. Dr. Faria is saying um, she needs uh, some guidelines about express entry and IELTS. Yeah, we'll be happy to give you uh, all the guidelines that you need. Uh, any questions that you might have, you can get in touch with us. Uh, the number one step we recommend people to do is um, complete our assessment form and we then get back to them with our opinion. If there are any shortcomings, we adv advise them. And if there is anything that they need to do to improve their score or the options available, uh, we discuss with them in detail. It's an important decision and I recommend people to uh, work with a, a an experienced person. Um, I'm not uh, referring to ex the so-called experienced person in your local market, you know, people claiming tall claims um, while sitting in uh, countries like India, Pakistan, Dubai, 15 years of experience and, you know, doing different businesses, but doing immigration as well. I just found out one of the um, person who used to work with me started a fumigation business of tick and mites, but also added immigration so I don't know what's going on with the immigration industry. It's going down the hill in those uh, countries. Um, the maximum you'll get is an agent for me working for or, or another con licensed consultant. So they could be at best agents or it could be at best unlicensed uh, ghost agents claiming to be uh, you know, very experienced. But be very, very careful when you deal with them. Always check their license number and um, like you're a doctor, of course, you would not want your patients to go to quacks, right? Or you even won't want your patients to work with uh, nurses, for example. So, I mean, of course, nurses are very qualified people. They help. They are very important. But then again, um, a person would like to speak to a doctor, right? So that is how it works. Uh, Saima Kamal uh, has entered. Hassan Raza, Fahad Hussain has entered, um, Muhammad Imran, Dr. Faria, thank you. Oh, you could win uh, today's consultation as well. Dishan, Fatma has entered. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, so we have got a lot of people joining us. Deepak has entered as well. Zahid has joined us from Dubai. Let's take another question. And uh, this is coming from... Uh, YouTube that how much investment minimum investment is required for the business visa. So basically uh, the business immigration program depends on um, uh, three important factors. One is your senior management experience or business ownership ex uh, experience. Um, you need to have at least three to five years experience depending on the program that you're choosing. You also 
I need to have a certain amount of net worth and net worth means the value of all your assets uh, that could include real estate properties, um, your uh, savings, uh, investments in uh, shares, bonds, um, various assets. And if your net worth is at least $500,000 in most of the program, it can vary, it can go up, it can go down, but $500,000 on average is the net worth. And you are required to present a viable business plan and uh, invest at least in most of the cases, $200,000. It can go up as well, depending on the program. But $200,000 is the minimum in my point of view. In what I remember, there are some regional program that could come up with some uh, you know, a lesser amount. But uh, in most of the cases, $200,000. And you're given at least uh, you know, 20 to 24 months of time uh, to come to Canada, establish the business, invest this kind of money, implement the business plan and hire uh, people and contribute to the Canadian economy. If you are interested in discussing this immigration option, the business immigration option with one of my business immigration team or with me, all you need to do is to complete our business assessment form on our website. It's a free assessment form and you can complete it. We can get back to you within two business days and we can arrange a consultation or you can go for a direct consultation there is a book a consultation link on our website you can do so and we'll be happy to assist thank you Kram has joined us from saudi arabia Mohsin has joined us marine has joined us as well rana krishna akula has joined us Hasin if hussein if the car has joined us so just remind you uh, we will be run, uh, running our giveaway uh, draw very, very soon. And all you need to do is to enter hashtag AIA that will earn you a free consultation with me. Okay. Mariam Farooq has joined us. Rasul Belim, Gulamaz Bloch, Shweb Khan has joined us. Welcome. Rishan Chaudhary is saying uh, that you change a lot. Yeah. Times are changing. People are changing. I'm getting old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 30 years in immigration industry, right? It, it, it has its own toll on your um, on yourself. But I've, I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. Mariam is saying she's looking forward to a positive response from AIA. Absolutely, Mariam. We'll be happy to assist you. Zulfikar is saying AIPP program date has uh, extended. Um, I have no idea. I don't uh, deal in that program. This program requires you to have a job offer and we don't arrange jobs, right? Uh, there are different people, in, especially in the local market, offering people job, ripping them off their money and people not knowing that, you know, they're not supposed to pay for these job offers. Uh, it's against the Canadian law to pay for a job offer. Uh, they are supposed to get paid from the employer rather than the job seeker. Hussain Iftikhar is a, an engineer with uh, 24 years of experience. That's wonderful to know. I believe you're interested in migrating to Canada and we can make an assessment. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead. Mm, okay, so Anas is saying uh, CPA Canada consider a qualification from Canadian uh, province and add points to CRS. So I'm not uh, uh, sure about it, uh, frankly, because in my point of view, it doesn't add any points. Uh, you get points for uh, credentials that get you, um, I would say, uh, you could claim points on the basis of number of years of uh, studies. And because CPA, while it is a, a um, recognize qualification and it uh, gets you the recognition in your field it won't get you points uh, toward educational factor in your crs calculation okay okay so another question coming from Walid. he's saying he's 29 years of age has done mba um his ielts which he did in 2018 with 6.5 band um 
must have expired by now, right, Walid? And he has 3.5 years, years of work experience in Pakistan. Uh, would it be easy for him to grab a job there in Canada with this profile if, I, if he applies for uh, Express Entry Program? Uh, his field is related to supply chain and logistics. So, Walid, I can't comment on the uh, job um, uh, security. I mean, uh, I, in fact, I interviewed one of my clients that we assisted six years ago. His name is also Walid. So your name reminded me, uh, our client Walid, and he actually gave a lot of um, uh, nice tips to people. Uh, these videos are available on, on my profile, my YouTube, my Facebook, LinkedIn as well. And he is an accountant uh, himself who came to Canada as a student and then he applied uh, for immigration and then uh, secured a job. So um, job security, of course, you need to have a lot of um, uh, other associated skills in order to be able to secure a job at Canada when you are in Canada. Uh, so I think your focus should be at the moment to immigrate to Canada. And then when you have something materializing, then you can also approach employers by LinkedIn or other portals where employers place jobs like Job Bank, for example, and uh, start communicating with your community, your friends who are already in Canada. There is no um, uh, other way, I believe. Uh, uh, you know, networking is the best way to be able to uh, get your foot in the door in Canada. So do all those once you have something materializing, right? If you start looking for job, even when you don't have a, a status in Canada, most of the, the employers are going to get back to you saying, because you don't have a status, we'll keep your CV on file. And when you have finally arrived here, we're going to look into it. So yeah, better save your time and focus on your immigration success. OK. OK, Dr. Sarwan is from Dubai and saying he has 454 with CLB 10. He wants to work as a doctor in Canada, but not qualifying in FSW so far. Yeah, so basically, if you immigrate to Canada, then you'll have to write exams, register yourself as international, uh, internationally trade, uh, trained uh, medical graduate. So you must be knowing the procedure already, uh, what you need to do when you come to Canada as a doctor. But at the moment, I'm sure that your question is related to the fact that there has been no uh, federal skill worker draws happening for the past seven, eight months. So, you know, uh, you need to be a little patient. I'm sure when the draws uh, start to happen, the pass rank would be actually on a higher side uh, because we can see that the uh, composition of the express entry pool has been uh, expanding the people who are waiting they have been increasing because people make their express entry profile on the daily basis uh, there are thousands of people make their profiles every day but naturally canadian government is only focusing on canada experience class and provincial nominee program applicants uh, as a doctor, I don't see you qualifying in any program, but I think Newfoundland had doctors on their list, but their quota is so limited that, that I don't see a lot of people qualifying or getting selected by Newfoundland. I would recommend that you wait and uh, let's see what happens. Uh, if you get an ITA somewhere, I would say September or October when they restart, hopefully they restart. Uh, otherwise, they have... Uh, around 500,000 international students studying in Canada. And um, they focus on that. And the future of Canadian immigration is actually international students. So if you have that capacity to come to Canada as a student, that might be a good option. And of course, that option is not available to most of the people. It requires a lot of investment. It requires you to quit your job and come to Canada and start studying, which is not usually possible. But that is a route a lot of people have taken, mature students coming to Canada, getting one year's degree, and then um, after getting one year of work experience working here, apply for immigration. So yeah, future is students. Mridul uh, Bergawa, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. 
uh, has kindly joined us from uh, USA. Thank you very much. Kaboos Gokar has joined us. Zulfikar Lang is saying, is immigration process slow due to COVID? Yes, that's correct. It is slow because they're working at a very low capacity at the moment. Kizar has joined us as well. Thank you. Um, Father Sand, as I indicated earlier, uh, uh, we will be happy to assist. Please complete our assessment form. Another question coming from Essen Atik, and he says he made his EE profile with 473 in March 2020. Now he is 462 because of COVID. No draw happened. What should I do? So I believe 462 is because you lost points and age factor, if I'm not um, incorrectly assuming, because I think the only way you can lose points is because of age. Uh, or maybe you repeated your IELTS and the other one was expired. But anyways, uh, it is actually unfortunate that people are losing points. They're waiting. But I think uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, everything happens for a reason, in my point of view. Uh, COVID happened and no one expected it. It uh, impacted immigration of some people who are overseas. But if you look at the way Canada is handling the, its immigration program, there has been no impact as such in on the newcomers' arrivals, or you could say uh, the processing of applicants who are already in Canada. So their focus has changed, and from the uh, point of view of uh, uh, a country, that is what their their target is. But naturally, they cannot just rely on people who are already here in Canada. They have to maintain a balance, and they have to select people from other parts of the world because that contributes to so not only the labor market, the diversity, the multiculturalism, um, uh, you know, it also, of course, helps um, in, in getting and tapping into the skill set people bring in from all over the world. So harmony, you know, r religious harmony or otherwise, uh, you, you see all these things happening when you welcome people from overseas. So this is going to happen. Just hold your nerves. Uh, you have waited for a very long time. And the wait, I think, in my point of view, is almost over. OK? So be very, very hopeful. Thank you. Sabina is late today, but uh, you have been excused. No problem. <laughs> but thank you very much for joining us again. Uh, you're welcome, Fahad. Tavina has entered a pool. So Riddle is asking, what is the process of open work permit? So open work permit are issued to people um, who are, uh, for example, accompanying their, their spouses. For example, a student wants to study in Canada, bringing in spouse, open work permit can be given to that person. Uh, there are other various other kinds of open work permits as well. Um, uh, and, Generally, people who are interested in working in Canada, they come here on closed work permit um, because that category doesn't apply to them. Open work permit means that you're allowed to work in Canada without a an employer in sight. And that is usually the spouses of temporary residents, like students or workers who apply for open work permit for their spouses. OK, so we have a few more people joining us, us today. And we have very limited time today. We have to run our um, giveaway as well, which is a free consultation. All you need to do is to enter hashtag AIA, and you're going to be entered in, in the pool uh, in the draw. You don't have to re-enter it if you've already entered it, OK? So no need to do it. Just do it uh, once. Ikram is asking a question. Uh, he will be making his wife as primary applicant, and he will be secondary applicant. So how much score in IELTS she should achieve to qualify FSW? Her age is 28, and his age is 32. Her qualification is master's degree in information security, and he is bachelor's in mechanical. Um, OK, so we can make an assessment, but I can give you a general idea, Ikram, that uh, there are two steps involved when you um, 
enter the express entry pool. First step is to meet the six selection uh, factors criteria, and you need to score 67 points. And there are minimum requirements for each factor in order to be able to enter the pool. Number one is uh, the language factor, which is uh, you need to have at least six bands in each component, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. So you need to have six in each. If you have good bands, eight, seven, nine in, uh, for example, three of the factors, but you score 5.5 in one, you will not be able to enter the pool. So minimum is six, but naturally you need to be competitive. You need to score more uh, in order to get good points. So I would recommend that she target the maximum so that she could score the best. If I would say uh, she need to target six, she would end up scoring even less. So you need to give yourself the challenge of scoring better and uh, uh, that way you would be able to uh, make your mark and uh, get the maximum score. So uh, depending on the uh, on other factors and the bottom line, she can target accordingly, but I would always say target more, okay? Okay, so let's see what who else uh, has joined us today. Mm, okay, so let's take another question from Facebook, and this is coming from Nirmal, and uh, Nirmal is asking, uh, she wants to know about study visa and skill worker visa for medical science post-graduation and teaching work, what are the requirements? If you're asking about work and job, we are unable to assist you, Nirmal, but if you're asking about immigration, yes, we can make an assessment of your eligibility and let you know whether you can qualify as an immigrant and come to Canada as an immigrant. Uh, you have also asked about the study visa. There are two steps involved. You need to secure an admission in a recognized uh, institute, and then you apply for a study permit. Uh, my company has been assisting clients for the last 30 years, and we can assist you in your student visa. If you complete our student visa form, we can uh, search for suitable um, institutes uh, that are on our panel, and we can secure uh, admission for you and then once you have the admission under your pocket we can go ahead and apply for uh, the study permit for you we are authorized to represent your study permit application as well by government of Canada okay so let's uh, go ahead uh, with another question Atif is saying trust in job offer we don't deal in job offers and you don't pay anyone for job offers okay be, please be careful about it repeat again and again, and that is uh, very important. Amir Mushtaq is asking, he is interested in European citizenship by investment, and he wants uh, me to guide him about it. Uh, I'll be happy to assist Amir. Uh, please get in touch with our team. Um, we have various programs. Uh, in Europe, you don't get any uh, citizenship um, by investment directly. Uh, they have uh, the uh, citizenship uh, uh, they have the residence by investment options where you get resident status. And then once you have lived in, most of the European countries have the option of applying for citizenship after six years, right? So you don't get to European citizenship or you could say citizenship of one of the European countries like Portugal, Malta, Cyprus, um, Greece, uh, directly. You have to spend time there or, you know, some of them don't really have, require you to spend time. There is a gap, basically. When you become a resident, then, of course, you have to spend some time before you could apply for citizenship. Uh, there is one country, Turkey, which partially in, in Europe, and uh, that is what we are doing at the moment, uh, mostly, uh, especially for people coming from uh, Middle East and uh, South Asia, India, Pakistan. They are applying for uh, Turkey citizenship, which is by direct investment of 250,000 US dollars in one of the real estate properties. So our associates can um, arrange uh, to for you to see those properties. You can invest in them. And it's a very, very good option. It's a good passport to have. Uh, Mariam Farooq is asking, what is the scope of, for teachers, preferably uh, primary elementary teachers with experience in the UK curriculum working here in the UAE? So if you have a proper... Um, teacher training, if you have been teaching UK curriculum, if you have been working in a country like the UAE, um, you are in demand in Canada. 
uh, teachers are always in demand in Canada. The only thing is that uh, the way it works, like in the UAE, I'm sure they require you to have proper qualifications and sort of recognition and certification. Uh, you will have, you will be going through the same sort of uh, um, training, licensing, certification in Canada before you could be allowed to work as a teacher. But the scope is excellent. Uh, the way you could do is you could uh, uh, log on to Working in Canada website and look at the scope of your profession in uh, various uh, provinces or whole Canada or you know even towns, and you can you know even select your place of residence based on the demand of your profession. Okay, wonderful. See, Makar has the same master's degree, MBA, 10 years of experience uh, in development sector, public organization, having close, having close, having close relatives in Manitoba, age is 35, two kids, no Isles, but PNP uh, for overseas. Okay, Makar, um, I believe you're talking about the Manitoba uh, uh, program uh, where there is a requirement of having a close connection to the province and it's good that you have a close connection so you may qualify if you don't have IELTS uh, I, I would recommend that you go for it because Manitoba would require you to have a language proficiency and proof of it um, it's a good option go ahead and do your IELTS and apply for it uh, read about it. Uh, the, the information is on their website. If you need our assistance, please get in touch with our team. We'll be happy to assist you. Okay, so uh, we have 15 more minutes before we run our giveaway. We'll be wrapping it up very quickly. I might not be able to answer all the questions, but yes, the giveaway uh, is uh, you enter, when you enter hashtag AIA and you are with us uh, until the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, we have uh, somewhere around 18 more minutes. Uh, so three more, three minutes will be allocated to the draw and then we'll wrap it up, okay? Okay, Ali Beg, thank you very much for joining us again, Ali. Okay, let's see. Let's see, we can have um, a few more questions. Ali is asking, do you work on E2 visa for USA? Yes, Ali, we do work on E2 visa, uh, EB5 visa, uh, all these visas uh, for the US. Or we do it through our associates in uh, USA. So we don't do it directly, but we do have uh, associates for the last 30 years and they do an excellent job. So get in touch with us. We'll be happy to assist you. Dr. Faria is saying that she is a pharmacist and he, she has two years experience uh, in a pharmaceutical company. She's married and want to immigrate with family through Express Entry. So as I uh, requested earlier, Dr. Faria, you need to complete our assessment form. We'll be happy to assist you. Uh, two years of experience is very good. Uh, three years, even better. So if you're about to complete three years experience, that will be even better. You're gonna get more points because it makes a lot of difference from two to three years, right? That would be wonderful. Ali Miraj, Ali Raza, say Fahad. I'm going through uh, the um, uh, the comments very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Ali Raza is saying master's in business studies from UK, four years experience. His age is 32. Which program best suits you? So Ali, I think you have got very, very good profile. You're losing some points in the age factor because they start deducting points from age 30, but you may still have a very good profile under the federal skill worker program and you might have a good profile in fact you do have good profile in a few of the pnp program for example saskatchewan depending on the profession you have um, you have good options available in other provinces as well such as alberta ontario um, we also recommend pei prince edward island uh, but yes, it's a it's an excellent profile. Get in touch with our team. I will be happy to assist you. Uh, complete our assessment form, and that would be great. Ome Aman is saying she's 37 years of age and uh, 10 years of experience of teaching, uh, and she wants a PNP option. So we'll look into your um, your profile, uh, Ome Aman. Uh, we would see. We would uh, ensure that we 
are looking at the correct um, uh, program because it's there's a lot of wastage of time and money when you don't select the correct uh, province. Uh, we'll see uh, where do you qualify. Get in touch with our team. Okay, so we have another uh, 10 minutes uh, before we run our hashtag uh, AIA, and um, hopefully you can win today. We have uh, Sharvan is saying, what are the PNP options for general practitioners? Uh, I currently do not have a pass on MCC exam, but as I indicated earlier, I don't see any option for doctors and the PNP because it's a regulated occupations. Most of the provinces require uh, people who can hit the ground running right away. And we understand in Canada, it is actually um, comparatively difficult for doctors, internationally trained medical graduates to start off uh, as soon as they arrive here you have to go through the procedure and that is why perhaps pnp options they don't have a uh, choice okay so hell is knocking the door and the door is open um okay kamal is saying uh, he has heard canada has increased the quota for immigrants but no express entry draw so far during the year do you see big number of PNP or FSW draws during second half of 2021? I indeed see that, and hopefully they are going to do it. They are basically waiting for uh, uh, sufficient vaccination happening so that they can uh, open the borders, and that is expected to happen by September. So this happened last year as well. There were no FSW draws. So it is no surprise that it is happening again because of different waves coming in and different variants emerging. And so they want it to be very safe this time around. But the difference is that this time we have vaccine, right? Last year we didn't have vaccine. So the chances of things going to normalization, um, the chances are very high. So hopefully these are going to restart. Um, Okay, so Furkan is saying that last week he asked a question, but when his question came, unfortunately lost uh, internet connection, so I could, couldn't hear answer. Age is 33, three months. I have three years experience, external auditor, and expected to score. So Furkan, as you can see that anyone who asks us a question about assessment uh, on this live session, we request them to get in touch with our team and complete our assessment form. And this is what I must have also indicated last time when you lost your connection. We have a free assessment form available. I personally look at each assessment. We get back to you within two business days. And uh, sometimes I see, you know, more than 100 assessments coming in one day. But we do it uh, diligently with every assessment. I'm going to do that for you as well. If you complete the assessment form and my team and I will work on it, make sure that we provide an accurate assessment. If we require further information uh, or require uh, further consultation, we're going to recommend you accordingly. OK. I'm at, is saying how much time is required for express entry applicants. So basically, there are, uh, you know, uh, there's a lead time and then uh, when you are waiting for a draw to happen and after the draw happens and if you're selected you get an invitation to apply and after an invitation to apply you have 60 days to submit your documentation once you submit a full application it takes six months for the RCC to render a decision so Jad is joining us from Qatar uh, I'm gonna go through the questions very very quickly now because we have very less time left uh, Fahim is saying any benefits, advantages for mining professionals? He just completed a PhD and thinking to apply for immigration. How to get a job offer from Canada and any specific website? So you can um, uh, approach uh, prospective employers through LinkedIn. Uh, you can do Job Bank, uh, which is Government of Canada's website, and upload your CV. Um, I think it would be difficult for you to get hold of a job without uh, having immigrated here. I would recommend that you immigrate to Canada and then. Uh, in the meantime, also approach employers. You are likely not going to get the job offer before immigrating, but at least you will have done the spade work and you will come to Canada and you'll have some interviews lined up maybe. But uh, it seems to be a very good profile because you have PhD and you have good experience as well, I'm sure. So let's let's do it. Thank you, Sajad. Uh, Sharon is saying, can a master's degree um, uh, be considered as Canadian education? Indeed, it will be. 
Zahra Khan, uh, Zahra Karim is asking, uh, in which province nurses are given opportunity to apply for immigration? So Zahra, we have had uh, a lot of success uh, in our nurses cases in various provinces. No, uh, uh, Nova Scotia, in fact, had a uh, exclusive draw for nurses uh, last year. Um, we see Alberta selecting nurses all the time. So yeah, I mean, uh, this is um, uh, a very good uh, opportunity for nurses uh, that they are being considered evenly by most of the provinces. You are in demand. OK, Zara? OK, Fahad is saying how we get citizenship with family in Canada with uh, professional experience. So you apply for immigration first. You get citizenship once you have become permanent resident and have resided here for three years. Uh, for to apply for immigration, of course, you need to see which pro program you are qualifying in. There is a federal skilled worker program option. There is the um, provincial options. So complete our assessment form. We'll be happy to assist you with that. Okay. Aisha is saying, I'd like to apply for high school or college teaching position in Canada. So I would say, uh, or AIE organizing an immigration seminar here in Karachi so we can attend uh, for our queries. So Aisha, when you attend seminars in Karachi conducted by the so-called experts in immigration, and they naturally misguide people that they are authorized agents of ICCRC, Government of Canada, something like that. They basically are not authorized. They are not licensed. When you go and attend those local seminars, um, it actually of no use because you are you are listening from people who are unauthorized, unlicensed, and they put this uh, licensed consultant's photo on uh, on their bag. They tell you that I'm the agent of this consultant, but you need to deal with the consultant they are representing, right? The way you are basically listening to me right now from Toronto. So we conduct these seminars online, and whenever I am in in Pakistan or in India or in uh, UAE. I conduct uh, these seminars in person as well. But times have changed. You don't need to go and attend a seminar of an unlicensed, uh, tall claiming uh, local agent. You need to speak to the licensed consultants directly. Uh, and there are like 3,000 to 4,000 licensed consultants. Most of them are based in Canada. So you can't come and meet with them in person at the moment, but you can communicate with them via live videos like this, and uh, they can do it. People like me who have been in the industry for the last 30 years, I have dealt with a lot of people without having to meet with them, and I just welcome them in my Toronto office when they finally immigrated. But I do travel a lot. COVID-19 has uh, restricted my travel, but it's going to be resuming very soon. So if you are interested in dealing with our office, better deal with the Toronto office better deal with me directly rather than finding someone representing us in Karachi because naturally there will be local staff hired to only uh, coordinate and that coordination is actually not needed because you can be in touch with me directly okay so I'll be happy to assist complete our assessment form and we will arrange a one-on-one -on -one consultation just like this one with you Okay, only five more minutes left, and we have lots of questions. If I'm unable to answer, we are, my team is going to respond by commenting uh, later on. Uh, Mubashir is saying that he's got experience, um, a two years bachelor's degree and a master's degree. Can I apply? Naturally, master's, uh, can I apply for master's? We can arrange um, your, your admission, and we'll be happy to assist. And Zara has provided has her details. She has experience in Pakistan. Um, what do you suggest? So I'll, as I said, we can make an assessment and we can see whether you qualify or not. Uh, five more minutes before we run our giveaway, which is hashtag AIA, and uh, we'll uh, give you a free consultation if you win today. Okay, so I'll take one more question, and that is coming from Fahim, and he's saying that. Um, uh, he is uh, he has 16 years of education and he's 34 and he has 10 years of relevant experience and degree and uh, he wants to immigrate so as i said you can get in touch with our team provide us your cv and we'll be happy to assist okay i'm 
compelled or inclined to take a few more questions. Very tempting, actually. Uh, Aisha Shabir is saying her, uh, she has, she's a GP in UAE. And uh, do you suggest contacting individual provinces, medical councils for them to consider pulling out applicants profile from FSW, depending upon the, the demands? So I'm pretty sure that's not going to work, uh, Aisha. Um, you need to have the licensing done. And uh, I'm sure that this is not going to be uh, very useful. Um, you can wait for your selection from the pool. And then once you have uh, uh, been selected, then perhaps things can move on. OK, Tavina, thank you very much for the appreciation, Tavina. Um, OK. OK, so um, I think we'll just wrap it up uh, and we'll run our our giveaway uh, shortly. And that I say, I'd like to have assessment for you from you. Kindly explain the process. So we, our website is www.amirismile.com. As you log on to the website, www.amirismile.com, uh, you'll find a free assessment link on the top. Uh, you can click that. Under that free assessment, we have a visitor visa, skill worker, sponsorship, all kinds of business immigration, all kinds of assessments. These are all free assessments. Just complete one of the assessment forms, and we will be happy to assist you further. Great, Aisha. Thank you very much. OK, so let's uh, run our, uh, we have 59 entries today. Today was um, a very competitive day. Last time, we had uh, somewhere around 45 odd uh, entries. Today, we have. 59. So if you are still logged in and if you uh, have entered uh, hashtag AIA, then you can win our today's uh, uh, giveaway. OK, so just I'm just going to give you one more minute uh, before we could run it. Just hold your nerves, guys. Let's see who wins today. OK. OK, so let's let's start. Here we go. OK, we have Rasul Bellum. Rasul Bellum is our winner for today. Congratulations, Rasul Bellum. Um, my team is going to get in touch with you so that we can arrange your one-on-one -on -one free uh, consultation. And uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining uh, this uh, giveaway today. Uh, we will uh, arrange more giveaways naturally. But yes, if you are interested in arranging a consultation with us, uh, you can always do so. There are options available on our website to book a consultation. But Rasul Bellum, um, you will be contacted uh, for um, uh, arranging this free consultation. You are the winner for today. Congratulations once again. And oh, thank you, Ali Raza. Before we go, and just I just want to acknowledge the fact that I'm actually overwhelmed um, uh, by seeing that a lot of people joined us today. And thank you very much. And uh, please get in touch with us. Um, um, directly uh, in Toronto. Our email address is info at amirismile.com. I'm gonna, just going to very quickly show you uh, the um, slide where you can get in touch with our team. Uh, we have our WhatsApp number as well, uh, where you can get in touch with us. There you go. The WhatsApp number has been given here. 6478350660 so just leave a message and my team is going to uh, attend to your uh, questions via whatsapp and uh, send us an email it is info at amirasmile.com uh, website is www.amirasmile.com we'll be happy to make assessment and as always uh, be safe uh, be happy and uh, please join us again every uh, friday 11 a.m. est Standard, uh, Eastern Standard Time. And please join and uh, like and subscribe our videos and our channel to remain informed about immigration 
uh, updates okay thank you very much once again and i see you next time